Guys, this little device could get you out 100 kilometer for $45. Inside this box is the brand new Beta FPV Nano TX version two. This is the brand new module. It is compatible with all types of micro bay transmitters out there, including Radio Master, Jumper TXs, as well as even the FR Sky transmitters. Now, this comes in a micro nano scale, which is also compatible with JR module bays if you get the adapter. So it will also work with TX16S and Boxer radios. And it's been two years since the original Nano TX came out from Beta FPV. And two years later, they've upgraded us to two watts of power. So this little micro size module can power up to two watt on 915 megahertz, which is kind of amazing. The 2.4 version will get you up to one watt and the 866 version will also do one watt. This new version of the module also incorporates a brand new T LED antenna on the very top. It is a T-shaped antenna, but it also has a special indicator light at the top signaling that you have signal. So it gives you a visual representation of your signal and your packets above where we normally see on the back of the radio. So sometimes you have to look to the back of the radio. Now you can look at the top of your antenna to make sure you have a full signal in your transmitting and receiving. This version of the module also has a built-in fan, which will keep this cool at the higher heat temperatures, as well as two different buttons. We have customizable buttons on either side. This is the bind button, which works by pressing it three times, and it will put this into bind mode. You can also use the Lua script inside your radio to activate bind mode in the ELRS menus in the system menu. And short pressing this button half second will also change the transmitting power on the back of the TX without you having to go inside your radio. On the very bottom of the module, you have a USB-C port for a couple different things, firmware updates, as well as plugging in an external power supply. Because if you're running one watt to two watt, you're gonna need a little bit of extra power. This can be powered off of a 2S battery and all the way up to 3S. But Justin, what about TBS Crossfire? Well, TBS Crossfire may have better penetration and shielding as far as being able to have encrypted packets back and forth from the module. That is a great thing that TBS has done for years and years. And now this technology that you see on the left, the original Crossfire module, it is about seven years old now. And TBS Crossfire was miles and miles ahead of the competition for almost a decade now. So this new Nano TX module, it also does two watt. It has a built-in fan. TBS Crossfire also does two watt. It has heat sinks on here and not a built-in fan. So you do risk overheating TBS Crossfire and having it reset on you, but the link will come right back if you can get it to cool off in the hotter months. This module is $45 currently, and this one is currently $150. So that makes the Nano TX V2 module a lot more attractive to me. Beta FPV is shipping the Nano TX V2 module with the current version of ELRS on board. It is currently 3.3 and it is updated and ready to work with 3.0 receivers. Currently on my Edge TX operating system on my Boxer, I do have the latest Lua script and that is 3.0. It does work with the module, which is great because it loaded right up and it identifies inside the system menu as the Nano TX V2, which is super cool. So if you don't see that, just make sure that your Lua script is updated. Now binding is pretty easy. Like I said, three buttons push on the left button on the back of the module. That way you can go into bind mode with the module. You can also go into the radio and traditionally go to the Lua script for this module and start the bind procedure. But let's go ahead and try it now for the first time with the bind button. So traditionally what we do is to get this to be in bind mode, we have to plug in a battery three times. So as long as we plug it in three times, really quickly, it'll put this receiver into bind mode. And the way you do that is one, two, three. And you will see that this receiver starts to flash blue. And I'm just using this giant battery because it's the closest thing I had. Uh, but go ahead and now, and with the TX, let's go ahead and one, two, three here. You'll see it flash momentarily. Now it's in the binding process. Once it goes solid blue, we should have a link to a 3.0 ELRS receiver. So now it is solid blue and it is bound. The optional way to do it again is to go inside the system menu here. We're going to press system on the boxer 
We're going to go into Express LRS here and it will load up. And once it loads up at the top of the screen, you'll see BFPD Nano TX V2. So it is identified in the Lua script. If you drop that Lua script 3.0 or better in the radio, in the contents folder of scripts, you will now have a working Nano TX V2. If we scroll to the very bottom, it does show the backpack option is active on this module, so you can add other types of things like FPV goggles and accessories. Now, one of my favorite features of this new module is the T LED antenna. If I plug in a battery here, you can see that this antenna is going to start to do things. And it does a few different types of things. From the front of the radio now, I can see that I have connection to the quad, which is really great. So you'll see it lights up blue there. And as we are transmitting, it will show you blue. And as it's receiving, it will go out and it will come back. So you'll see it start to flash once you start flying your quad away at distance. But that's super cool that you have a visual from the front of the radio now without having to turn it around and look and see if you have a solid connection to your receiver like we normally do. Now you can get longer range and better stable link quality because of the built-in TCXO temperature compensated crystal oscillator. I know it's a lot to talk about, but this little oscillator basically controls the temperature and it gives you a better connection and link to your receiver for long range flights. And if you're flying with a bunch of different people, it helps you keep a strong signal. Even though there's a bunch of other signals popping around you, it will hold a connection to the receiver. And if you're wanting to see some real world examples of how far Express ELRS modules can go out on what power, what frequency, uh, you can go to expresslrs.org, click on long range competition. And if you want to test this module out and add an example here, you can do that with your YouTube video. So what you do is you go to this website and you could submit your test. Now, if you scroll down, it talks about the rules, the max distance from home. You have to show your OSD. It shows the 2.4 gigahertz rankings with 50 milliwatt or less. And the maximum that we have on 50 milliwatts or less is kind of amazing. On ELRS, we have 31.56 kilometers on 2.4G, running a packet rate of 50 hertz at 50 milliwatt with a wing. That's pretty far out. They do have an example link that you can click on at the very far right right there. And it will show you how far out this pilot flew. That was less Y that did that. If we scroll down a little more, it says 100 milliwatt plus, and this shows us the maximum distance that has been recorded so far with ELRS at 100 kilometers on 2.4G. That's pretty amazing. And this guy was pumping two watt during that flight. Pilot handle was snipes, and currently, this link is disabled because it was removed from YouTube. Uh, also, Wesley Vartley was, um, I believe, kind of slapped on the wrist or slapped on the hand because of what he did for ELRS testing for the community, uh, unfortunately. So that video was removed. However, if you scroll down to the 900 megahertz rankings, we have 50 milliwatt or less right there at 40 kilometers, 50 milliwatt or less. Uh, the Leslie Yagen did out to uh, 40.7 kilometers. That's pretty impressive and a little further down we also have 50 kilometers plus in the 100 milliwatt section on the 915 so let's go ahead and link over to his video and this is his mini talon flying elrs on 915 at 50 kilometers out and he is only running uh half of the capability of this particular transmitter uh, so he was running at five cut and Urilla was only running a quarter of what this transmitter is capable of doing. So this brand new transmitter, the original Nano TX ran 500 milliwatt. He was able to get 50 kilometers out on 500 milliwatt on 915. If you get the two watt version of the 915 that is available today on the V2 version of the Micro TX, God knows how far out you could go. You could probably do 100 kilometers plus, depending on what size of gigantic Lion battery. You might need to have something like a 20,000 milliamp battery, uh, 20 AH to make it out that far. But that is pretty incredible that he was able to get out uh, running 500 milliwatt on 915 with his mini Talon. And there you can see he's at 49 kilometers. He's in RTL currently and returning to home. Now, a lot of these link systems will fly out further than usually analog video can transmit back to your ground station. So if you lose camera, 
The good thing about these types of setups inside iNav is 90% of the time, you're not going to actually lose your telemetry. So some people have returned to home in an instance where they have lost camera signal um, and they only have telemetry on the screen to come back. So they come back to the area, they loiter in place, they land line of sight. Um, pretty terrifying, but it does happen to people who fly long range. But that's pretty cool that he was out 50 kilometers on 500 milliwatts. So that just shows you the power and the capability of something like the Nano TX V2. It's kind of crazy. Now, I've been doing this so long that I can hear what the community is saying in my head. Right now, you guys are sitting back. Some of you guys are saying, well, Justin, what, why wouldn't I just get the Super G Nano transmitter? That one's $70, and it's Gemini. Uh, therefore, it supports dual frequency. Now, this one is singular frequency. You can see by the single antenna. However, the Gemini uh, does one watt per frequency per antenna. So, is it? to what technically kinda um, but i believe that the nano transmitter the version 2 will go further out than the gemini uh, super g that is yet to be determined and the only reason that i say that is possibly because of the two watt power that this one can do with the tcxo oscillator so that that really depends on testing and what we're going to see in the future now this one's more expensive 69.99 and this one's 45 dollars. so if you're on a budget Get this one, it will do 2 watt, and you're probably likely not to lose signal because it should have great penetration, power, and signal strength. The TX version 2 with the antenna on the scale weighs 33.8 grams, so it is pretty portable. The TBS Crossfire full size with the diamond antenna is weighing in at 118, 119 grams, and the Super G Gemini module weighs in at 81.7 grams. So at the end of the day, this is looking like it's going to be a pretty cool product from Beta FPV. They've been really pushing the envelope lately with their TXs. And I have to say, with the release of the Gemini dual frequency module, it is super awesome. So I'm not surprised to see them update the Nano TX. And honestly, the Nano TX is basically a budget long range module or FPV racing module with the TCXO oscillator inside, which is gonna give you a nice link quality. If you're surrounded by other people, this is a quick and easy bind setup, three button push and you're bound. Uh, TBS Crossfire now has a built-in CLI command to the newest firmware. So if you use the TBS Agent Lite and you update your receivers, and your module, you can now use the CLI prompt to be able to uh, make that automatically start to go into bind mode without having to push the gold button. ELRS, pretty easy. Plug in the battery three times on the quad. It goes into bind mode, push it three times on the module, and you're bound up. I mean, with less than a couple seconds. It's pretty quick. So that's pretty cool uh, to see all of these different technologies coming out. And I, I think that what it really boils down to is budget for you and me, uh, this is gonna give you true diversity. This does not. However, I've been flying without true diversity for 10 years. Um, and I've flown every type of different FPV device out there. And I've not had a big problem with my Crossfire system. It is reliable. And, you know, I've been on the fence about ELRS forever. Um, but it looks like Crossfire may be finally on the lean, like literally. But there it is, Beta FPV giving you guys something to chew on. It's a pretty cool module with a lot of options for the smaller radios and the nano size. And using the converter, we can get it into our larger Boxer and TX-16s and TX-16S. So I think that's pretty cool. 45 bucks, long range module. Check it out in the link down below. Guys, I'm Justin Davis bringing you all the new info and the new products on the channel. Take care and I will see you on the next one.